and we are recording again. Hello. I just realised I waved, and it looks like dirt. It's not dirt. It's where I use awful lighters that peel my skin off. <laughs> it's not dirt. I promise. Not dirt. Not so dirt. we have gathered here after a successful riding corner video which pumped us up and now we want to work so we have gathered here to uh, look back at some of the notes that we have done into the collision course uh, note folders without recording and I think uh, I think we have some notes on Nali uh, how Nali goes to Svalbard and Nali goes to Scrapyard or Scrap thingy. I will open both of these, and uh, this f uh, this shared folder that I'm displaying on my screen shows our working notes. So what we have is we have like situation notes, which are like the all the outlines and fragments and thoughts on a given well situation that might form into chapters later on or might uh, or or they might uh, populate uh, several chapters who will know we don't know but uh, but yeah so so that was the it, it's it's the piling information into topical uh parts method instead of just starting from starting to unroll the yarn from the beginning and then trying to get somewhere where right now we're just sort of organizing the materials and uh, the next stage from that is text notes, where we have already tried to uh, come up with the first draft level text. So we have a bunch of notes on the situations, and we have begun to uh, uh, to populate the first draft text as well on on certain bits. Now, uh, so Scribe encounters Nali, Nali goes to Svalbard, Nali goes to Scrap Station, yes. Let me open that. Uh, and I don't remember exactly uh, where we stopped recording, or what what exactly did we, did we record during this... Uh, uh, full week, but I think uh, I think we were mostly outlining during that, right? Hmm. Think so. So we don't have any record on on these. Now it goes to scribe. And I will I will leave these uh, these text bits on the screen uh, just as a sort of extra material, but uh, but let's let's not even try to oh my my feet has frozen let's not try to you know read read them but just sort of retell what we have uh, gathered up so far or what we have figured out so far. Where would you like to start? Well, uh, tell me and tell our uh, curious viewers at home uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what our adventure would look like in the start. So, like, what uh, uh, what kicks off this adventure, and what uh, uh, what gets the balls rolling, and what's inside each ball. Uh, okay, so I think, uh, from my perspective, the logistical starting point would be, or the logical starting point would be Scry, uh, ar arriving at that facility, mm -hmm. um, doing all the stuff in Scribe and the Doctor, and another note, just quickly, while we're recording videos of this, let's make another note here, he's not a detective, he's not an investigator, yep. he is, he is 
gathering data. Yeah. The whole deal is data. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, elsewhere, uh, Gnarly is doing his thing in a different region of the Void Cloud. He's sort of been he's been given a sort of tip and he's hanging around in this different area um, and he view, he sees a ship go into the cloud, he tries to warn him off and then uh, they ignore him and he mm-hmm. and stuff happens yep. he th- okay, so break in here? Uh, so help, so <laughs> in, in, inter- interjecting uh, interjecting notes for viewers slash readers uh, so, if Scribe is the sort of uh, data retrieval agent, then Nali is basically scrap retrieval agent. And both of these uh, two people have received either a task or a tip uh, to watch out for something. So, the Scribe has received a task to retrieve certain information from somewhere, and the uh, Scrap Collector uh, has received a hot tip to uh, receive uh, to watch out for certain uh, stuff somewhere that can bring great profit uh, and uh, location wise the the place where uh, where the scribe goes the, pl- the place where the data jockey goes is a concealed uh, guarded facility that he is inexplic- inexplicably gaining access because there has been some sort of malfunction and the void cloud is a space-time wedgie uh, in <laughs> the uh, in the region of our uh, our map space so, so somewhere where our stories take place and it is a sort of yeah it's it, it's it, it's some sort of anomaly so it's it's something that people usually stay clear of okay carry on mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do that a lot. I'm going to say things that mean a lot to me and you, but probably don't mean a lot to mm-hmm. the listener. Um, so yeah, there's that they've been gently nudged onto these paths that they're on, and uh, Gnarly recovers some stuff. Uh, he recovers a machine, Synax 6, who is like an Android-y type thing, but r- more recent thinking is like he's been deactivated, and it's going to take a while before Gnarly is able to repair him, so that's sort of like a background thread. Um, actually, diverting massively off this for a second, I was thinking, and this is massive spoiler territory, uh, I was thinking that perhaps the operative that they get from the prison station has to use or reactivate Synax in some way when they're at the facility in order for them to get out of where they are. Um, that's 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 a good idea because uh, so I'm 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 jumping into the explanation as well. So basically, the thing piece of the tec- uh, our scrap operator or st- uh, scrap collector uh, acquires a piece of technology. Uh, let, let's just call it that a piece of mm-hmm. technology that co- uh, contains data. It might be an android, it might be a, an orb, it might be a spider, but he gets a piece of technology that contains data. Some mm-hmm. of this data he will be able to access, and then some of this data could be locked from him and the others, and some o- and the and the locked data could indeed link to later events when somebody uh, will. Uh, We'll get like more out of it. Okay, carry on. That was just a massive jump ahead, though. So yeah, uh, I just wanted to get that out there. So Nali covers technology, uh, gleans some of the data. He doesn't glean all of it at first. There's only like little bits and pieces, I think. It confuses him, so he goes to seek someone out at his his scrap station. Uh, who can help him sort of work this stuff out? And there he runs into the um, the f- field scribe. That's not right, is it? it? Like scribe that is separate from Svalbard, but like front end uh, sort of. I would I would call them like wandering scribes. 
That's the one. Uh, and a, a, a sort of world building side note is that when uh, uh, when thinking of the scribes' organizations and the scribe orders, uh, I am pulling uh, examples or, or taking uh, a little bit uh, looking at the template of uh, uh, of medieval monastic orders so you will have like you will have a home base where you have your specialists uh, slash uh, monks uh, slash uh, uh, data uh, data hoarders data analysts mm -hmm. you have your uh, field work uh, field work scribes who who come and go who who are sent out on missions to retrieve stuff and then you have these sort of uh, wandering or, or rogue scribes who might or might not be uh, tied to certain scribe order, but basically they 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 are like the uh, magazine booths uh, in uh, in populated areas or like uh, again thinking in terms of medieval monastic order. Those would be like the hermit monks who wander around and. Uh, uh, and bless livestock and uh, and sell uh, prayer beads and stuff. So such an it, it's 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 a simplifying analogy. Of course, they do more, but like for 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 the purpose of the direction we're thinking in, that's 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 where it goes. So Nali presents some of this data to the wandering scribe. And the wandering scribe, after a little bit of analysis, is like, "No, man, this is this is too much. You need to take this to Svalbard because I cannot do this here." Mm -hmm. uh, and he gives Gnarly or or a, a device that mm -hmm. it, 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 you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. So basically, uh, our uh, scrap dealer uh, is given access to the scribe orders uh, home base or, or the uh, mothership and mm -hmm. and uh, the one of the things that we still have to figure out uh, in in this uh, sequence of events is how to present or how how to make uh, the whole data retrieval meaningful uh, for all parties involved because uh, at the moment we're still not sure uh, what exactly uh, motivates the uh, scrap collector uh, to uh, to even have this data studied further? So there has to be something that's important to him in there. Mm -hmm. So again, that's that's like note to self. We have to figure out why why is it important to him to study it further. And and a second bit is. Uh, what's so important or so suspicious in there that it sort of sparks the interest of the uh of the vagabond scribe or the wandering scribe mm -hmm. so it's like because uh in this case uh in my mind the the sort of uh, trigger sequence would be that the, the wandering scribe recognizes the importance of importance of this data so it's like it's not that they uh they help out Nali from the kindness of their heart, like, oh, you want to know more, uh, therefore you can find help from there, but it's more like he recognizes or they recognize that this uh, this shit is important, yo, mm -hmm. and it would be best to bring it upon the eyes of the uh, Svalbard scribe order. So so like that's 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 the idea there. They they have stumbled upon something uh something that means something in world and they help each other out and decide that yes this is something that needs to be studied further go on so then after that occurs gnarly restocks theory which is a ship and he sets off into the great darkness uh on his way to Svalbard now at the same time, Scribe is on his way back from the moon base facility thing, and he's feeling a bit dejected, right? He's like, 
Uh, okay, one key thing is he has still got... Sc scribes are able to retain information uh, sort of like... Bi bi I want to say biologically, I don't think that's the right word. Uh, actually, mean. actually, it is. I, I think that's, that's exactly uh, what you're looking for. So it's like, uh, uh, with the scribe order, uh, or w with the scribe as a job, you would have the technological aid, like you would have the specialized uh, field suit that is able to enhance your senses and record shit for you and store information. So like basically you, you have a hard drive in your pants, but, uh, uh, but uh, as a sort of, as a redundancy, uh, the scribe's skill set would involve uh, memorizing uh, things the old fashioned way. So it's like uh, it's like or organic Johnny mnemonic. Uh, you would have to learn the information and retain it in your uh, in in your brain, and not to, and and this is important. You don't uh, you would have to stay indifferent about it so that you don't sort of start messing with the information so that all this uh, all this memorized stuff doesn't interfere with your dealings as a person so yeah you w you would have to be able to memorize uh, large data sets deliver them and then forget them so it's like they, there's this whole skill set involved that uh, you memorize let's say let's say you have a list of names you memorize it you deliver it and then you sort of uh, meditate and clear clear your mind and uh, and this way you will have had the sort of fail safe in case the recording doesn't work but you have also protected your own brain mm -hmm. and now the point that we are uh, getting into is that because uh, the scribe was unable to uh, interact with this ship while he was retrieving certain bits of data he did memorize uh, a list of uh, stuff, uh, people, places, uh, experiments, etc. So a, a list similar to the list that the uh, scrap dealer has found. And uh, because, uh, because of the traumatic events when he was getting out of the facility where he found the information uh, he hasn't been able to uh, perform the quote-unquote uh, mind cleanse after he's returned to his ship and and gotten all the recorded data. So as he returns to his home base or as he returns to his mothership that is uh, Svalbard, uh, he still has that information stuck in his mind. Mm -hmm. Go on. Scribe's also at risk here uh, a little bit because he's in the, the quote-unquote group of scribes that uh, uh, they can they can go a bit loopy because of yep. not cleansing their mi their minds properly or, or holding on to yeah. too much information or getting too involved in the information. Yeah, so so this is this is something that uh, we figured uh, that would be like a liability. Uh, for mm -hmm. the scribe. Uh, I, I don't think it's a matter of holding too much information, but I think it is a matter of interest. So it's like if you're, you're not supposed to get interested or get involved in the uh, stuff that you have memorized because then it's going to interfere with your senses and your own uh, capabilities and your own uh, cognitive status. But uh, uh, our scribe we haven't we haven't named him yet, by the way. Uh, our scribe uh, is a is in the risk group, so it's like he he has the tendency to to sort of uh, get sort of curious about the information itself, which means he is in in the risk group of getting sort of tangled in the information and thinking about overthinking it about it too much and sort of uh, facing a uh, a burnout that way mm -hmm. we ha we have thought it yes. through it is it is actually the way we dis we described it uh 
in in our notes or in a prior stuff it's actually more it it it, it makes sense more than it sounds right now <laughs> i think it's a really interesting aspect of the character so i, mm. I wanted to bring it up and make sure yeah but uh, but yeah the um, the keyword here is overthinking go on it's <laughs> <laughs> a problem we all suffer from i'm sure um right uh, okay so uh, in short order, Nali, the scrap collector, arrives at Svalbard, and there's like a bit of an entry process that I'm going to gloss over here. Like, there's he uses the device and all this and that, or not mm -hmm. the device, but the thing he was given the token. Yeah, for. that's that's like technical details. How exactly yeah. will he will he be admitted? The the long short of it is that Nali ends up on Svalbard, and I think. Uh, after interacting with a couple of people, he ends up in a canteen while while they're analysing his data. So mm -hmm. he hands over some data, and they're like, "Oh, hey, this is going to take some time. Go chill out in the sort of canteen scribe living area deal, um, mm -hmm. and and we'll get to you as soon as." Go yeah, uh, there was one sort of relevant bit though uh, in the whole reception process is that normally. When somebody brings in a, yo, I have this family tree here that I want analyzed, can you help? Mm -hmm. uh, it, during these uh, smaller jobs, the visitors uh, slash clients would uh, not be taken to the mothership itself. But instead, mm -hmm. they would be uh, they would be dealt with in the sort of satellite ships or, or smaller stations or like reception area, quote unquote. Uh, but again, because the data that our scrap collector has brought is point one, it seems relevant. Like it's it's something that that is of great interest for everybody, and it is complex. Uh, then he will be taken to the main main mothership or main station itself. So it's like that's a li that's a little bit of special treatment, and uh, because the uh, main ship or mothership itself uh, is not meant for guests but it's meant for scribe accommodation then uh, it's like uh, he, he will be a little bit he will feel a little bit lost there so it's like uh, uh, oh a cantina you say uh, okay <laughs> mm -hmm. so like basically he he is a uh, it's it's not user friendly it is uh, it is meant for the locals a local shop for local people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. Uh, and here we get introduced to I think who's was someone who's going to become one of my favourite characters is the I call him the scribe. Uh, hey, what? The or she, she or he? We haven't really decided. He, she, that, they. Yeah, we don't we don't have uh, genders for many characters yet. The food scribe mm. I think is going to be one of my <laughs> favourite characters. Um, so yeah, we get introduced to they, <laughs> and uh, they uh, they have a bit of a conversation with Nali. It's cool. At the same time, scribe, uh, main scribe, off scribe, unnamed scribe, who needs a name, scribe, uh, <laughs> arrives back at Svalbard, and he, I think he starts unloading the knowledge that he's got, right? And as he's doing that, there is some crossover with. Gnarly's information. Let me check. So we're getting into grey area now because this is where the situation notes aren't as fleshed out as, say, the stuff before Okay, it. what I have here is... Uh... <laughs> Gnarly comes in, scribe, com scribe comes in. Something happens. <laughs> 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 Uh, oh yeah, at, at, at this point Scribe still has Doctor's data in his mind, still has memorized data sloshing around his head. Uh, when, because reasons, he somehow gets a glimpse of Nali's data. Uh, I think... Uh, I think either... Uh, I, I think the idea was that when he is downloading his stuff, uh, the uh, library system sort of alerts him that mm -hmm. uh, a pending job or, or a, an analysis in progress involves similar or same same stuff. So it's like when when he brings his uh, retrieved data in, 
uh, the the library lights up something like yo we also have something on this would you like to know more <laughs> mm -hmm. okay go on scribe based on this warning or information or notification then goes and seeks out the sort of scribe librarian head scribe librarian dude um, but the head scribe librarian dude or dudette hasn't really got time for him and sort of just points him in the direction of Gnarly or doesn't and scribe organically finds out about Gnarly. Uh, scribe then goes and talks to Gnarly mm -hmm. and the two of them have a conversation. Gnarly's a bit like, uh, I don't know, he, I think he might potentially be a little bit freaked out and tries to win the situation back by pointing out repairs needed on scribe suit and tries to ingratiate himself yeah. with scribe that way. Yeah. Yeah, so like this uh, is this is this is where we have sort of uh, stopped with our notes. Uh and yeah. and I think uh, we might have different ideas about how each of them would react to each other. Uh but yeah, one of the uh sort of key interactions or, or key skills that we have attributed to uh, to the scrap collector is that he he's 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 kind of good with people uh and not necessarily because he is so social but more like uh, he is able to notice when somebody uh, could use some technological aid so it's 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 li it's like when you talk to somebody and you notice that uh, their shoelace is undone and you sort of uh, point it out and help them, uh, he's like that with technology. So he's like, oh, so how how long has your uh, uh, enhanced ocular been malfunctioning? Uh, by the way, I I could I could uh, bring you apart and trade it with you or something like that or like oh. How long has your computer been? Uh, your computer is making uh, funny noises. Can I can I help you uh, repairing it? So so basically, mm -hmm. he he notices the little techno nuggets about other people, and and he offers to help them out with them. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So, okay. So that's, and then I think. I don't know, but then potentially, and this is where we get into sort of speculative area now, potentially something happens or something, uh, Scribe and Gnarly leave Svalbard. For mm -hmm. whatever reason, there's mm -hmm. an exit scene, and they start tracking down people involved in the data. Mm -hmm. But first level names, like the names that the report, the, there, there are certain reports and they're about people, and they're going to go seek out the people that those reports are about. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them end up as dead ends, or they're snatched out right from underneath them, or they're, they're at some points they're just turning up dead. Whatever, mm -hmm. I don't know how much detail we go into in that in the story. Um, uh, but <clears throat> eventually, I think they either stumble upon Fortune's name in the list. Or Jules' name in this. I th I'm leaning more towards fortune. At this mm -hmm. point, I think. Yeah, yeah, me, me too. So I think like uh, they they come across Fortune's name, but the only way to get to Fortune Harper, or like the the lead that would take them to Fortune Harper, is Jewel Harper. Mhm. Mm and I also think there's okay. So from Seeker, the, this lead might also be snatched out from under them but because of the events of Seeker and Jewel putting Fortune into hiding or Fortune going into hiding essentially on Shalasi 2 it makes him very difficult to find so mm -hmm. that lead can't really be snatched out from so I like how certain things are sort of linking back to each mm -hmm. other like there's the, yep. a the reason why Fortune can't be snatched out um, yep. so they decide to go seek out Jewel and then we sort of smash cut to Jewel and Eclipse at Harper House, mm -hmm. uh, they're engaged in a. Mm -hmm. a, a yeah. Okay. You know, uh, break, uh, break here, break here, break, 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 break. break. So, uh, so we have, uh, we have come to the almost come to the end of the notes on uh, two viewpoint characters. Uh, two of the balls rolling who are about to smash into the third ball uh i think let's let's try to wrap this up and maybe start a new recording uh, with jewel and eclipse but uh, when it comes to 
yeah actually let's 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 leave some more speculations for the next video so so right now the situation is that we know that two dudes who have each retrieved some stuff because they were tasked or tipped to have found interesting information along with that stuff uh, have gotten interested and involved with that information have gotten other people involved in that information and now they have run into each other and they are sort of getting interested uh, uh, in what either of them knows and so on so so this this is like I think that this is about the as much as we know about uh, them uh, chatting in in the cantina or cafeteria uh, aboard Svalbard. So I think let's leave them there for the moment. I will uh, start the new recording in a minute and then uh, we shall speculate some more. How's that? Okay then. <laughs> <laughs> we will we will return shortly. Stay yeah. tuned. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.